<laughs> so glad I caught that. I wasn't even recording. Anyway. Hello, YouTube. Welcome back to another video by Shonen Blast. What's up, YouTube? It's your man Shonen Blast here, back with another video for y'all. I'm back from a another hiatus, as I usually as I usually am. I, I take like one video and then just go on hiatus, apparently. But yeah, my name is Shonen Blast. Real name doesn't matter. Uh, I often I often feels like I have to do these like once a year, cause like I said, I'll be I'll be on hiatus like once a year <laughs> after doing like one video. But it's always usually just because of school. So I'm back now. Summer is summer's here, and uh, I feel ready to make some videos for you guys again. A few things before we hop into what I'm going to be discussing today, though. First of all, I just want to announce that I finally released my one-shot manga, The Power of Hate. It is a 60-page uh, shonen epic about a final tournament battle. If you love tournament arcs and great character writing, go check it out. It's in the description below. It only costs $5 to read, and if you think I'm a pretty decent artist, it's also pretty good eye candy. So, uh, and if you need more insurance than that, uh, here are some positive reviews right here. I'm super proud of it, and if you read it, please let me know what you think. I read all my Instagram DMs and my comments, so wherever you attempt to reach me, I'll, see, I'll definitely see it. I'm not that famous yet, so strike while the iron's hot, I guess. Um, anyway, I'll be having a discussion with you guys, albeit a, you know, one shot of one, because y'all can't really talk back to me. But as you can see in the background, I'm in the process of drawing a character for my one shot, uh, The Power of Hate. His name is EX. A certain part of this process compelled me to talk about the subject we're going to be talking about today, and that is when I eventually start coloring this thing with paint, um, more specifically watercolor paint. Now when I first decided to become a manga artist, I did exactly what anybody else attempting something great would do. When they're trying to become great, they study the greats. Uh, so as frustrating as it was to actually find footage, I finally was able to find certain videos of my favorite manga artists illustrating their work. Ichiro Oda, Masashi Kishimoto, Taitai Kubo, my favorite Yusuke Murata. Yusuke Murata, he's not too hard to find footage of because he does. He used to do live streams. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of mad that he doesn't do live streams anymore. But uh, he used to do live streams, so you can find, you can literally find him drawing chapters, like whole chapters of One Punch Man on YouTube. You can just search it up, but um. But I also Googled everything you need to become a manga artist. Um, I saw things that, you know, they all said the same things. Pencil, A4 paper, B4 paper, rulers, G-Pen, Maru Pen, eraser, a light box. And, you know, for coloring, most manga artists use Copic markers. It's very common. Uh, I follow this world world of manga to a T. I never even dared to try to anything else outside of what I normally saw. I had to learn Copic markers. They had to be Copic. I couldn't use any other coloring tool. Although I wasn't entirely just being a snob about it, I was. Um, oh, manga art should only be this way and nothing else. I, I won't lie, but that wasn't entirely reason. To me, when I saw manga art, in color, it 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 always took my breath away. Um, the colors are phenomenal, and it's really what won me over um, manga art over anime art. I know a lot of people really love anime art because you know it's it's moving, and especially when you know it hits those sakuga moments. Anime fans know what I'm talking about when I say sakuga moments. The the beautiful movements when when the budget hits you know still even despite that manga always wins me over and if anything manga itself is enough even without the color sometimes but of course the skill set of the of the colorist makes the biggest of difference when it comes to my preferences and if done by a master colorist uh, a manga's color work will never cease to take my breath away 
Like, you don't even understand how excited I get when at the end of a One Piece chapter, I see the words cover page next week or new color spread coming next week. And when it comes to my manga collection, I actively try my hardest not to spoil the cover of a manga for myself before buying it. Like, I will ask, like, I'm not kidding. I will seriously try my best not to look at the screen when purchasing something when purchasing a manga from amazon just so that i i can surprise myself when i get it in person i still haven't even seen every cover of bakuman and those colors still blow me away some manga covers that don't impress me color wise the most are stuff like my hero academia and that's because and that's because the uh, author colors it digitally so it's a little different in that case but it still it still does i still do wait to see the color because something about my hair academia covers composition and creative creativity look amazing period all right enough of that tangent but my point is copic markers always look beautiful to me and so that's why i was stuck with them for so long um but the thing that changed my mind finally was in, when I started scrolling on Instagram and I saw a certain artist um, who was also a, a, a illustrator of manga style characters. Only this time he didn't fuel my obsession with Copic marker color work. Instead, it was something that I fell in love with more and that ended up being watercolor. And it was just that easy. Now I can only imagine the amount of potential that I'm missing when it comes to not working with traditional manga materials. Although I am outside of the culture of manga, so maybe I don't really have a say on which tools to use and which tools to bend and stuff like that. But aside from the culture of manga, if you want to stand out in the market of manga, switching up the norm may be to your benefit. But yeah, I can only imagine all the potential I missed in working with other materials outside of the normal for manga. Like, I mean, even one of the manga legends, Take Hiko Inoue, who's known for uh, Slam Dunk and Vagabond. He's also known for a certain the way he works on vagabond the way he illustrates for vagabond instead of using a g pen which which 99 percent of manga artists use instead he uses a brush pen i can imagine it may be a little bit harder but for the aesthetic of a japanese traditional samurai manga the elegance of a uh, art style like that is is perfect so i encourage everyone who is also pursuing a dream uh, in manga stand out. The traditional tools for manga worked for generations and they worked like charms. They look amazing. And the traditional way of making manga has worked for, for years and years and they worked very well. Not to mention they look awesome, they look amazing, but I would encourage you not to cut your potential short. Of course, the main key to stand out among other manga artists are stories. But the thing is, how are you going to get people to read that story? How are you going to stand out if people aren't going to read your story in the first place? You're not going to stand out if nobody's reading. And so, you can stand out in more ways than just a story. Honestly, it's whatever's comfortable to you. But if you can paint with acrylics, try it. Shoot. Webtoons are really popular right now, and their new format of reading vertically is probably making one of the biggest difference in when it comes to new fans of of comic readers in all seriousness my point isn't to find a new type of paint to color your manga with or to find a new way to color in general not even simply to find a new way to create art in your manga it has nothing to do with art specifically rather just find something different about your approach to manga uh, whether that's whether those new approaches make things easier or harder 
you want to gain attention from readers before they become your readers. And I'm not saying being super experimental just for the sake of being super experimental. That's for those who've already made it, those who already are successful, like people who are already successful in the industry. From their success, they had they have the um, they're able to risk being super experimental. For example, I I remember reading about a manga artist who attempted to make an all CGI manga. Granted, this was before 3D modeling was all developed as it is now, but needless to say, it was ugly and it failed. But again, my point is, approach manga differently in a way that will benefit you. A final example I'll leave you with comes from the best mangaka of all time, Yusuke Murata. Don't at me. This comes from a very recent chapter of One Punch Man, which is going incredibly, by the way. Like, oh my, like, I will keep telling people how awesome this manga is right now anyway i digress but literally in the middle of a chapter of one punch man a regular japanese black and white manga chapter in order to demonstrate the scale of a certain occasion in the story you know like whenever there's a plot twist uh in the story it's usually like in a really big panel maybe it's a maybe it's a double page spread image maybe it's like really huge just to demonstrate the scale of the occasion, right? Instead of doing that, he totally breaks all the rules that we manga readers were used to and thought was expected from our reading experience and made the next three pages in total color. At least page would have been grand as they were even without color. But the unexpectedness of just having a random colored page in the middle of a chapter was enough to make me freak out and just call one and, and just claim One Punch Man as the greatest manga of all time. Granted, so many things in One Punch Man were happening at the time that it was really just an accumulation of a lot of things that made me say that. But also another example, even one of the most recent chapters of One Piece, uh, when it had the cover of Shonen Jump magazine. It was painted with, I don't know if it was acrylics or watercolor. I don't, I don't know what type of, I can tell it wasn't colored with the typical Copic marker look. This was different. It was, it was definitely painted this time and it looked, it looked gorgeous, honestly. Either way, it wasn't Copic markers. And this is the first time we ever saw Oda do this. And this really helped to sell the grandness of the occasion, for lack of a better term. And in my and in my opinion, and in my opinion, that was one of the best covers One Piece had had. But that's all for my tip this week. Approach your manga differently. Help yourself to grain readers by giving them something they've never seen before. Shoot, if you're good at printmaking, try to incorporate that in your manga somehow. Uh, think outside the box give us a new road to manga no one has ever seen before give us something outside of the norms of traditional manga like i said don't be too experimental just try to stand out a little and that is your best bet to gain readers as you can see i'm still trying to figure out this watercolor stuff but i'm really happy with how this turned out it was super fun and I'm really excited to look forward to the next thing I can paint. I'm actually super pleased with how this turned out. A fun fact, if you pay attention to most of my artwork, they're mostly colored digitally. And when I finally figured out how to color digitally, I I just went I just went from there. So this is like one of the first times I really like fully colored one of my illustrations confidently as a finished piece. So I was really I'm actually really proud of myself for that. So Anyway, go check out Mo Ski. Anyway, go check out Mo S Q I. Sorry, I, I don't know how to pronounce that name, but um, he was the illustrator I was talking about it who got me into doing watercolor. His his socials are down in the description. And don't forget my socials, my Twitter. I just be dropping wisdom sometimes, just from time to time, and sometimes some rants and about random topics. It, it, it's, it's, it's crazy sometimes. But uh, check out my Instagram, 
that's where I post my latest art as well as I be <laughs> posting random stuff on my stories too uh, just see what I'm, uh, I'm I'm usually active on there I'm also now streaming on Twitch so please check me out there I'll be on there from Mondays and Wednesdays at 6 p.m. stop in say hi see my rare face and chat with me I'm just starting so I won't have many people in the chat anyway again my manga the power of hate is also in the description below it's also five dollars so let me know what you think you can comment dm me just let me just know just let me know what you think about it and um i'll i'll definitely see whether it's positive or negative i'm all i want to know is your opinion honestly i would just be happy just to know that somebody took their time out of their day to read it and to let me know what they think as, as well so that would mean the world to me this series is also coming soon Thank you everyone for watching. I plan to do more of these advice like videos, but if you have any other suggestions of what you'd like to see from me or hear me discuss, let me know in the comments below. Please like if you like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I'm uploading. Thank you so much. I love each and every one of you. Goodbye.